Well, yeah, you're obviously already a champion, but this for undisputed status. Um, how does this compare, the feeling you had of this, compared to the last one? Uh, <clears throat> probably, I, man, I have to be 100% honest with you. I just don't see any difference. You know, it's just more like I'm more used to it. If that's a good way to say it, you know, I'm more relaxed, I'm calm. I know what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it the best way possible as always, and I'm just chill and relax, you know, enjoying the moment as always. Obviously, this is about personal goals, you know, being a champion, but pretty cool, you and Brandon Moreno both on the card, International Fight Week. Does this feel like a special moment in your career, you know, representing the country as well? Yeah, it feels like a special moment, of course. You know, we, we have been working for this moment for a long time. But regardless of, you know, this is a special moment for not only uh, Brandon and I and the Mexican people and all the Mexican fighters fighting in this, uh, in this card, it, we're individuals, right? We're like facing in our own ways. And uh, even though we're a team, we're a Mexican team, if you want to say it like that way, we're looking for our own uh, legacy. You know, and uh, I'm just happy to be part of what somebody else is doing as well, like Brandon Moreno, uh, a big story behind all of us, and I'm just happy to be part of it. You faced some legends already in your career. Uh, Alexander Volkanovsky, a lot of people consider top pound for pound on the planet. Is this the toughest fight matchup-wise, style-wise, that you've ever had in your career? Man, I don't know. Yeah, I can see uh, Alexander Volkanovsky is really good. He's really talented, explosive, he has durability. All the things that you guys already know. I don't really have to repeat every time the same because you guys know already what's up with him. And um, I just think this game is about styles. You know, what style beats what style or what guy has the best day, if you want to call it that way, the day of the fight. I just think it's going to be really difficult for him to beat me. Uh, he probably thinks it's going to be easier. I don't know. My style is completely different to what many people think, not only because what you can see from outside, but just being in front of me in the cage is, is difficult. It's, it's hard for anybody, you know? And um, of course, there is many styles that can neutralize or, or control the, the style that I have, but I have been working on, on uh, my weaknesses uh, to make them like a strength. And uh, you know, that's, that's why I'm at this point right now facing uh, Alexander Volkanovsky for the Undisputed Belt. Nice. Last thing for me, uh, I mean, you said you're kind of calm and you're relaxed and all that, but what would this moment mean to you? I mean, nine years after the Ultimate Fighter, it hasn't been an easy journey to get here. There's been some bumps in the roads along the way. What would it mean for you to be undisputed champion on Saturday night? Just the same. It will mean the same for me. You know, it's just one, one more accomplishment on my career, uh, making my family, my country proud of what I have done in my career, in my life. And it will mean a lot to me, you know. It's, uh, I was thinking about this not, not long ago. Like how many people can, can truly talk to themselves inside their heads and say, okay, I have accomplished what I dream of one day. I truly did it. I, I make it happen because I believe in myself and my skills in my team and the people around me and I, I could make it happen. You know, so saying that to myself, that's the biggest achievement. It has, it has no, no price tag, you know, and uh, that's, that's what I like about this game. Jay, over here. Um, you've been in the UFC for all of the iterations of featherweight champions with Aldo, Connor, Max, and now Volkanovski. There is a debate over who people think is the best featherweight champion of all time. So I'm curious, where do you rank Volkanovski in the, compared to all the other featherweight champions of the past? Well, I just think there's, there's been different uh, phases of MMA during the, the past of time, right? But like, let's, okay, let's talk about Aldo. Jose Aldo was undefeated for like 10 years, you know, until, okay, something happened, Connor beat him, and then Connor was uh, amazing, you know, in 145 uh, pound division, and he had uh, great fights. And uh, Max Holloway is another legend. So I don't, I don't really, I, I couldn't put like a number one, two, three, and four to those guys. I just think they're all amazing, and I'm, and I'm happy to have face one, now two, you know, and uh, it's great for me to have these kind of opportunities. Outside of that second Max fight, all of Alex's featherweight fights haven't been especially close. Like, he's kind of dominated a lot of his opponents. So what do you think they're doing wrong when they enter the octagon with him? 
with uh, with Max? With Alex. Oh, with Alex. Yeah. Well, I don't I don't really think they have many weaknesses as well. You know, I just think Alex is good. Alex is is, is doing a great job. Um, he's smart when fighting. When fighting, he has durability, which is a really important thing when fighting, uh, because he can kind of keep the same pace for the uh, five rounds. You know, which is something really important in this game. And uh, he's able to figure out many of his opponents, you know, the style or the little mistakes they do. And he takes advantage of the, um, those situations, you know. I think it's, that's why. I'm curious, what did you make of Ilya Tapuria's performance against Josh Emmett in Jacksonville? Can you repeat that question? Uh, what did you make of Ilya's performance against Josh? Ilya Tapuria's, oh. yeah. Oh, I think he did great. I think he, uh, I don't know how many um, five rounders he had in the past, only one. Yeah, I just think he needs more, uh, probably more experience, and that's it, you know. But he did amazing, you know. He he did a great job, and I think he he's gonna get there one day. And final one for me: Saturday is going to be Robbie Lawler's last fight in the UFC. I'm curious, do you have an early memory of Robbie? Do you have any favorite fights of his from his career? Yeah, I was um, Robbie Lawler uh, against um, this famous fight. Uh, I just forgot. Is it Rory? Yeah, Rory McDonald. Uh, that was a crazy fight, you know. They were all busted up, and uh, yes, something memorable. I think that the, uh, this Thursday they're gonna induct that fight to the Hall of Fame. So yeah, that fight. <laughs> yeah, over here. Here? Oh, oh back. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, so uh, just to piggyback on a couple of questions that you got. Uh, next November will actually be 10 years with the company within the UFC. Doesn't it take the pressure off that you spend a majority of your career fighting the BJ Pens, the Frank Eggers of the world, and you know this is just another day at the office? I, it's not like, I don't know, it's been a long time. It's not like I don't feel it. I feel it, of course, the, the feeling of the fighting and uh, all this is there. But I used like, my, uh, my thoughts of like, oh, this guy is a legend. Oh, I'm going to face Frankie Edgar or Korean Zombie or Max Holloway. That went away. I'm like, for me, it's just another human being in front of me getting prepared for the same. And um, I'm excited to see to all perform them uh, that night. Saturday. Exactly. And are you focused more on what you're going to do well as opposed to an answer for all of the problems that he could bring in the cage? Is it just you know, going in the cage, doing what you do well, just you, uh, pretty much execution uh, on your part? or Yeah, Yeah, it's just execution, execution like you say. Uh, of course, I have to focus on what he does, but I have to be more focused on what I do. My mistakes and, and uh, rights, and uh, I focus on that to get better and strengthening in my mistakes in order for me to get a, a better version of myself. And that's what I have been doing. Awesome. Thank you very Yair, much. Yair, aquí atrás, en español, aquí, aquí, gracias. Evento principal, semana de la International Fight Week, eh, contra uno, si no es mejor, libra por libra. ¿Qué se siente para este sábado? ¿Cómo te sientes tú como, como peleador? A question in Spanish. Um, uh, first, uh, the main event on Saturday against uh, one of the best pound for pounds ever. How are you feeling? Me siento contento, estoy tranquilo, estoy a la vez emocionado, eh, esperando solamente que mi gente llegue aquí, mi familia, están listos para apoyar, me imagino que están súper emocionados también. Y es eso, creo que en realidad me siento solo feliz y tranquilo, relajado. Sé que es lo que tengo que hacer, sé la manera de ejecutar mi trabajo y lo voy a hacer de la mejor manera este sábado. ¿Tú crees que el hecho de que tú estés en el evento principal, que Brandon sea el coestelar, los dos por campeonato del mundo, los dos son campeones mundiales. ¿Tú crees que este puede ser un momento definitivo en la historia de, de, de las artes marciales mixtas para tu país, para México, independientemente del resultado? The answer, first of all, uh, calm, happy, very happy to be here, um, and also just waiting for my, I'm even emotional about this, and uh, not just waiting for all my crew and my family to be here as well. Um, a lot of emotions running high, but I think I'm prepared, uh, ready to execute. As far as the question is concerned, do you feel that this, uh, the fact that you're in an event with Brandon Moreno, does this mean even more for MMA in Mexico and for everything that's been going on lately? Muy bien, yo creo que, creo que este es el momento. Creo que ya estamos viviendo la realidad de las cosas, ya estamos viviendo esta nueva era, no es saber si todavía, no sé qué más estamos esperando, ¿no? O sea, ya estás viendo la realidad de las cosas, los resultados ya están aquí, no hay que esperar más para ver qué más hay, los resultados ya están. Ahora, lo que viene, lo que parte de aquí, ya va de sobra, todo lo demás ya es sobra, 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 lo que, lo, los resultados que vamos a venir forjando después de esto, 
eh, son añadiduras, si se le puede decir de esa manera, a lo que ya se ha logrado hasta ahorita, pero ya estamos viviendo la era, la hora ahora es de nosotros, estamos con tres cinturones en México, viviendo la mejor faceta del MMA que, que ha existido eh, en todo el tiempo y, y yo creo que va a seguir siendo así por un, por un buen rato. This is the moment for Mexico. I feel, I feel the moment is already here. I don't know what we're waiting for. I don't know what else we need to do. I mean, the results are here. Everything, the, 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 the work has been put on and everything else is just add-ons, if, if I can call it that way. Just stuff that comes in extra. The moment is there. We've done everything we could. I mean, we have three belts in Mexico. Everything else is just, is just an add-on to everything that we're doing and, and the moment is here. There's nothing else to wait. Yeah, buenos días, acá atrás. Hay una presencia de nuevo tu esquina no la pelea pasada, Mike Valle. ¿Cómo ha sido el volver a tener al coach Mike en la esquina en estas últimas peleas? Increíble. Um, ah, perdón. Um, just the presence in your, in your corner, having Mike with, with you in your corner. How does it feel to actually have that presence there? What does he bring to the table? Increíble. Se siente increíble el poder tener eh, a mi coach que ha confiado en mí, ha tenido mi espalda desde el principio de mi carrera. Eh, él sabe mis debilidades mejor que nadie y también mis fortalezas. Eh, juntos hemos trabajado en fortalecer las, de, las debilidades que, que tengo como peleador, como persona y no solamente eso, sino trabajar en todo lo espiritual y todo lo que conlleva ser un, un, un peleador, pero no solo eso, sino una gran persona también, que es en lo que estamos trabajando. Eh, trabajamos en ser mejores, no solamente peleadores, sino seres humanos también y me siento contento de que esté aquí conmigo, me siento respaldado, me siento contento y me siento feliz de que hemos formado un gran equipo a lo largo de los años. I'm very happy to have him here. Someone's got my back, someone that knows everything I've been through in my life and have been with me throughout my career. Someone that knows me as a person, as a fighter. Also, uh, he knows my strengths and we've been working a lot on trying to strengthen our weaknesses, but not just to become a better fighter, but a better person as well. So very happy to have someone so important to have assembled such a great team. Yair, yo sé que están haciendo legados individuales, pero tú conociste a Brandon hace 10 años en Jackson Wink MMA, se hicieron buenos amigos. Te hemos visto celebrarlo durante los años, te, lo hemos visto a él celebrarte durante los años. ¿Cómo se siente que en este momento tan importante, pues sean ustedes dos, no los que están compartiendo la cartelera, los amigos? Uh, yeah, you've known Brandon for 10 years. Uh, you guys have you've, you've celebrated. Obviously, you have individual accomplishments. You have celebrated his career. He has celebrated yours. Um, but at this point, like you're together here, how does it feel to actually actually be together and both of you uh, sharing this card? Sí, antes que nada me gustaría expresar que Brando Moreno para mí es una inspiración. Brando Moreno para mí es una inspiración, es el primero que pudo lograr unificar un título para México y, y de cierta manera me hizo abrir los ojos, ¿no? aunque siempre he sabido que las cosas sí se pueden lograr después de que entré a la UFC, empecé a ver que las cosas eran reales, él fue el como que abrió todavía más mis ojos y, y me dijo, mira cabrón, aquí está unificado el título y, y ahora lo demás pues va de cada quien, ¿no? entonces… Me siento orgulloso de que, de que estamos eh, teniendo una cartelera juntos, de que los dos estamos representando a México eh, para unificar, bueno, en mi, en mi caso unificar mi, mi cinturón y él mantener el suyo. Y no sé, es que en realidad con palabras, no alcanzan las palabras para expresarte eh, lo orgulloso, lo feliz que me siento de, de estar en una situación como esta. First of all, uh, let me get this out of the way. Uh, Brandon Moreno is an inspiration to me. This is a guy that actually unified titles and, and, and the first one to bring it to Mexico. Um, this is a guy that more than anything, we knew that yes, we can. And when he did it, it, it was the, this is here, just go and come and take it. So um, obviously very happy to, to have been able to share and, and to, to witness this, um, he, to have him in a card. I don't even have words to express how proud I am to actually have him here, in my case, to be able to unify this title. Última pregunta de mi parte, Jair. Eres un artista marcial de por vida. Yo sé que lo que te gusta es probarte, probar tus habilidades. ¿Cómo ha sido en la cima de la edición Pluma probarte, tal vez contra el mejor momento que hemos visto en la historia del peso Pluma y saber que lo que estás logrando ahorita pues está resaltando en una, gran, en una parte muy importante, no en la historia del MMA mexicano, en la historia del MMA? Uh, you've been a mixed martial artist for your, for your life, and, and obviously not only you're proving yourself now like you wanted to, but you're proving yourself in a moment that the division is actually at a high, probably all time. How does it feel to actually be able to accomplish what you're accomplishing in a moment that's not just special for Mexican MMA, but for the vision in itself? La verdad, no me estoy enfocando en eso. O sea, en realidad para mí es solamente parte de, o sea, lo estoy viviendo porque llegamos a este punto en, eh, a lo mejor en el, en el deporte, 
no sé cómo, cómo expresarlo sin que se malentienda. Estoy tan enfocado en, en mi pedo, si lo quieres ver de esa manera, que ni siquiera me fijo en lo demás. O sea, nada más estoy enfocado en hacer las cosas de la mejor manera que puedo en cada momento que tengo. Y, y yo sé que indiscutiblemente, a menos de que Dios me quite la vida, voy a llegar a, a hacer un performance el sábado en la noche y lo voy a hacer de la mejor manera, como hago todas las cosas que puedo en este momento en específico. Entonces, ni siquiera estoy viendo como tanto futuro, no me enfoco tanto en lo que pasó, ni, ni, ni quiero que se malentienda, tampoco estoy enfocado en tanto en lo que está pasando alrededor, sino solamente en ir a hacer mi trabajo de la mejor manera, cada momento. Uh, how can I say this? So actually, you know, I, 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 not to, so please don't take it this wrong, the wrong way, but I'm just so focused on my stuff, man. I'm focused on my crap. I just want to make sure that the, the, is, uh, everything that's around me, that's the most important thing. Is, 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 unless God takes my life away, like I'm going to be there on Saturday and give the performance of my life, and I'm going to be there and take this. So I'm just so in focused in this moment and everything that, that we did to actually get to where we are right now that I'm not worried about everything that's that's a part of the, the this this major uh, thing that you mentioned. Jair, Jair, ¿cómo estás? Una pregunta rapidita. Aquí atrás. Ah. <laughs> eh, Jair, en México hay mucha polémica en este momento por la manera en la que Saúl Canelo Álvarez en el boxeo define a sus rivales. Vienes tú, viene Brandon y enfrentan a los mejores en MMA en el mundo. ¿Crees que este hecho puede ayudar a que la gente o el aficionado le ponga más atención al MMA en lugar del boxeo o crees que no tiene nada que ver? Um, at this moment we we do understand in Mexico that there's a there, there's a big you know controversy as far as Canelo Alvarez finding opponents for for her assist fights in, in the boxing world and at the same time here you are you got your fight Brandon got fights and you're going to fight this weekend uh, just, does does this mean that this could be a winner of opportunity for for MMA to even grow uh, with uh, what's happening in boxing, or do you think that's nothing to do with each other? Antes que nada, todo mi respeto para Canelo. Otra de las cosas, no estoy enterado de cómo funciona si él o su equipo son los que eligen los rivales o no. Pero en realidad, pues, y igual no es por ser grosero, no no sé. Es que no sé, no sé, no estoy enfocado en eso, no estoy pensando en eso. Este, la gente siempre va a decidir al último lo que, lo que ellos quieren. Nosotros, yo estoy enfocado en hacer mi trabajo de la mejor manera para que de algún u otro modo a la gente le guste y si deciden seguir esto porque ven que es real, entonces que lo hagan. Si quieren seguir eh, fanatizando todo el tiempo algo, pues adelante, ¿no? Yo estoy trabajando sobre mi propio legado, sobre mi propio camino para, para forjar algo que es real, que, que ha costado muchísimo trabajo desde que tengo cinco años. Entonces, no sé qué más decirte, ¿no? Entonces, la gente puede hacer, pensar, crear la polémica que quieran. Nosotros estamos aquí trabajando por un mejor futuro. Um, first of all, um, I, I don't, all the respect to Canelo Alvarez, and I really don't know what goes into actually matchmaking in boxing and how he decides his fights, but... Um, I, we're, we're here, but th this is not the focus. I, again, I don't want to be rude about this, but I'm not focused on that. I'm not paying attention to all these things. I just want to make sure that my work, my legacy, and everything that I put in to actually get this done, and if people are going to like MMA, may, may they like it for, for, if they see it and they like it, why not? Um, of course, there's going to be people that are going to be fanboying this and not, and not, uh, and maybe not, but I hope that people enjoy this and people will come. I'm not worried about the the, the controversy uh, of what's going on in the other world. Yeah, you're back here. Yeah, you're straight in the back. Uh, did you talk to the UFC about bringing your special belt that you had made with the Mexican colors? Actually, yeah, I don't know if he's... He's here? Yeah, I think he's here. You guys wanna see it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Let's take a look at it. So, I'll probably have somebody helping me out to explain this better. Uh, have you guys seen the movie Coco? <laughs> okay, uh, this is basically the, the movie is based on the family that made this. You know, those are like, uh, of course, like a anim cartoon animation, but it's also a real family. Uh, the artist is Jacobo and Maria Angeles. They're from Oaxaca, Mexico. And all you guys can see is not like printed, it's handmade. Dot by dot, line by line, is handmade, you know, by uh, Waxakan like artist, these guys, and uh, 
you, if you guys get close to it, you guys can see like the detail it has. All the colors are made naturally. There is nothing chemical on it. Uh, like they, I don't know, like flowers and stuff, they, they mix flowers and they mix all these crazy colors. They're all natural. And this is a unique piece, right? It doesn't, it doesn't have a price tag on it because it's unique. You know, I have, I have had a many, um, many people is like, oh, look at this guy, he's already like bragging around with his belt. This is a gift from my management team and from this guy, which I really, truly really appreciate because this is unique, you know, and uh, you guys can see the Mexican art on it, and it's a beautiful piece, and um, I'm proud of having it here presented to you guys. And uh, if you guys have something to say to the UFC, something like this will be cool for the, f for the future. You know, uh, it was my manager's idea, so it's great. Final uh, question. Uh, your teammate, longtime friend, Donald Cerrone, goes into the Hall of Fame this week. What has he meant to your career, and what does it mean to you that he said, you know, if I could say one guy is the next cowboy, it's Yair Rodriguez? Hell yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> my man. And I, um, well, I was messaging him yesterday. I'm like, hey, I want fucking tickets. What the fuck are you doing? He's like, bro, fucking, you can call me if you want. It's up to you, but like, you just go and do your shit, focus on, focus on you. I don't want you to lose focus because of this or that or whatever. And just do you. And then I'll be there, if possible, to help you out Calway. I'll be there with you in the sauna. You know, we'll do, we'll go have fun. We will play. Just focus on yourself. And that's what I'll do. You know, he doesn't need me there in the, in the Hall of Fame induction or anything like that. I understand that uh, he will be busy. I'm busy doing everything that I have to do. And he knows I'm always going to be there for him. So one night, it doesn't going to make any difference. So I just love him. I wish him all the best. I congratulate him. And you, you guys will see. I have a good surprise for you guys Saturday. Uh, yeah, you're over to your left here on the back. <coughs> um, quick question for you. Uh, you know, this is the second biggest underdog you've ever been in the UFC. And the only other time was your fight against Max Holloway. And I mean, that first round was one hell of a first round, and I don't think very many people saw that coming. Like, do you embrace this? Like, do you embrace this opportunity to play spoiler and, and people, at least the odds makers, uh, betting against you there? Uh, again, I don't put attention to none of that. Like, people can always think whatever they want. Like, at the end of the day, what's going to talk is my results in fighting. You know, people can bet against me whenever they want, you know, but my friends are winning more by betting to me. You know, so I like it. I like being on the underdog. I like being in the underdog. I'm going to show you guys why you guys are wrong about me. For, and then last question for you. We're in the gambling capital of the world. I got to ask you, do you have a favorite roulette number or do you have a favorite color you like in roulette? Favorite color? Uh, if, in roulette. Do you play, you play roulette at all? We're in the gambling capital of the world. got to ask you. I didn't understand the question. Can somebody help me out with that? Roleta. Eh, juegas acá, la, haces apuestas acá en Las Vegas. Oh, ok. ¿Tu color favorito? ¿Tu número favorito? Rojo, negro. Rojo, negro. Oh, no. Nah, um, black. <laughs> Thank you.